Welcome back, fellow gamer. I want to talk to you today about some anti-deck tech. You might be asking yourself, what the heck is anti-deck tech? <laughs> well, it's essentially a way of countering a certain commander and a certain strategy. So I figured I'll take apart what makes the deck really good. And in case you're facing a really strong Idris player, you can go up against this player using some of the cards. These are for people who might not know the vast amount of cards that are in Magic the Gathering. Hopefully this gives you some ideas on trying to beat that one deck that just keeps beating you every single time. Now I will be doing an opposite video later on down the line of a deck tech for Yidris, but right now I wanna highlight ways to beat him. Now obviously with a card like this, he, it, he takes advantage of him attacking. So the deck might be centered around him getting a lot of attacks in, doing commander damage, a Voltron style deck, if you will. Now that's not to say he won't have other ways of supporting this strategy of playing cascade type spells and just taking advantage of the top of his deck. So deck manipulation is probably going to be one of his key themes. But shutting down his commander will be an effective way to go, but it might not be viable long term because he might be able to power through that even without Yidris. So cards like Oblivion Ring uh, and other types of enchantment removal like that are good, but I'm not going to focus on stuff like that. That's that's low-hanging fruit, as well as spot removal cards like Path to Exile, Doom Blade, Murder. I can go on, but I won't because that's a lot of different cards that just do the same thing, essentially. The meat and potatoes of those cards are take a creature, say you're gone. <laughs> so let's go into some of the cards that I like to play to counteract these types of builds. The first one is Ether Sword Cantonist. So this is a artifact creature from the Alara block, and it's really good for hosing decks that play multiple spells per turn on a regular basis. It's even better if you are an artifact deck, because you get around, but you can play a lot of different artifacts. If you're running a non-artifact deck, this hinders everybody, so it's something that you need to be weary of in case you decide to play this card, because it will bite you in the butt if you want to go off and start playing a lot of spells. It's a great card to play against combo players. It's a great card to play against people who just like to spill out their hand and then refill it again. So keep that in mind next time that you have a player that's really just going after you and going deep into their library and just going, you see their library going, and then, and then they kill you. Now the next card is Rule of Law. It's exactly like the last card I just showed you. So Ether Sworn Cantonist. However, it doesn't discriminate against regular spells versus artifact spells. You're just not allowed casting multiple spells. And that applies to everybody on the table. Again, exact same premise. This is an enchantment. So if you're in a meta that doesn't have a lot of enchantment removal, this is going to be a lot harder to hit than a creature. So the fact that it's an enchantment in my books actually is a plus because a lot of people don't pack in enchantment removal for the certain meta. And that's what I really like about Command. I'll just take a little break and a little side, is that each play group has its own meta where things sometimes are so overpowered in one group and another group, like nobody, nobody even bothers to see it as a threat because it's gonna get removed. So there's cards like Ghostly Prison, Norn's Annex, things that cause players to have to pay mana or pay life or a combination of both in order to attack you. It kind of screws them up a bit, forcing them to pay extra stuff. Their mana would be better used elsewhere so it's always great to force them to use mana especially in a deck like this where the commander is theoretically going to be wanting to attack every single time and odds are he's going to have some sort of evasion so at least make him pay now i predominantly showed you white if you're not a white player maybe like blue blue has the same type of effect as i mentioned a few cards ago in arcane laboratory so essentially what it is is as it reads on the card fairly fairly simple simple line each player can't cast more than one spell each turn Again, it's another enchantment. It's three mana as opposed to the two mana of like a rule of law. So keep it in mind if you are a blue player. And earlier in the video, I did mention cards like Oblivion Ring and the like, but I didn't specify on actual auras that might just attach to the creature. And this here is actually something that I favor. Again, it's enchantment removal. It's a bit harder to do. So if a player will want to remove it, they're going to have to waste a spot removal on the actual on their own creature unless they have obviously enchantment removal, but that, again, that in my experience has been fairly rare. So there's Prison Term, which is pretty awesome. And there's also Song of Dryad. This turns a creature into a forest, which is pretty cool. I actually like playing this. Like I will consistently hit people's commanders with this. And since there's no more tuck rule, even though we still play where you can tuck your general, this card keeps the general on the battlefield and randomism useless. Yeah, you get an extra mana, but 
you're going to be wanting to use your general to attack, not produce green mana. Then there's a really goodie, which people don't really see coming. It's Mind Break Trap. So if a player is casting a lot, they've filled up their stack, and you're getting into a battle of like counter spells, or you're getting into a battle where they've, they've cascaded, they're playing an instant on top of something to take effect, you try to react to it, they play another spell, drop Mind Break Trap. <laughs> Exile all their spells, and you are good to go. Not only that, it could cost zero depending on how many spells are played that turn. I highly suggest it. It is a situational card though, but with a lot of people playing combo type decks, it helps. It helps greatly. So this is a card you might want to consider. It can fluctuate in price because of where it's played and the applications it has. If you already own the card and maybe you just didn't know it was that great of a card, slot it in. I know four mana counter spell. Sometimes people are like, oh, what is this? They don't read the whole thing and they shove it into their bulk box. Check your bulk box if you bought during Zendikar. Odds are you have, you have a card that's worth a few bucks. <laughs> the final card I'm going to mention is Teferi, Mages of Fear. He's actually a general I love, and he's a general that my friends don't like playing against. So remember how I talked about breaking up play groups? I actually stopped playing with Teferi as my general because he's really strong, and my friends weren't having that much fun when they were playing against me. I still sometimes occasionally will make one deck with them and, and play a few games, but this card hoses combos and cascades, just that ability, like a, an opponent can only play a card anytime they can play a sorcery. Your stuff has flash. I, lo I love the card. I love him and I think he's a great card. If you want to build a deck around hosing <laughs> whole like combo strategies or strategies like Idris, He's the card you want to go with. Maybe even build a deck around. So if that person in your playgroup has been pissing you off, I would say Teferi is a good option. Teferi is a good option to build a deck with. Uh, slam it in blue good stuff and then get ready to ride. That's, that's what I think. I personally adore it. I love it. Can't get enough of it. So those are the cards that I would play to counteract a Yidris deck. There are certainly hundreds of other cards. If you have any ideas on how to counteract a Yidris player or a combo player, let me know in the comments below. I would love to share your ideas with the rest of the community. If you'd love to check out some of my other videos, you can do that right here. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do that right here. It lets you know when we go live for our live streams. It also lets you know when we upload new videos. But more than that, it helps the channel out. I greatly appreciate it. I'd like to thank you for making me a part of your day. And until next time, good gaming.